Hello, my friends. Katie Day with the Moving to Texas team here with another episode of the Real Advice Podcast. Excited to dig in with this week's guest from the central coast of California, team leader and debonair real estate agent. I only say that because his name is Jay Bond. What's going on, man? How are you? What's going on? I'm doing good. I'm doing I good. I do think you're pretty snazzy though. So like I try it, to be. it fits, you know, I clean, I clean up real well. I, so. Where's your tuxedo? Is my, my concern. tuxedo? I girl, you know it's 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 winter or approaching winter, I guess. But it's been like seventy here, so I'm yeah. I'm in the t-shirt. I had to be a hot, sweaty mess here on your yeah, your California boy. <laughs> um, all right, so you're in the central coast of California. Where where yes. is that? Like obviously the middle, right? Yeah, we're right in the middle, right? The central, that's central. Uh, yeah, so we're in a weird, you know, I will call, I call it weird, but it's an intimate little pocket. I think so we're you know loosely intimate pocket, in California. So we're about three hours north of LA three hours south of San Francisco. And okay. so like my neighbors that kind of, you know, leverage the name Central Coast, right, is you know, Monterey County to our north and Santa Barbara to our south. Uh, Monterey is probably down to two, two and a half hours away and Santa Barbara is yeah. about an hour. So kind of our little neighbors here, but a lot of little, you know, beach town, wine country, we're a big second home market. So, you know, average age of my clients about 60, 65. And okay. so kind of an interesting thing from like what I hear a lot of our friends and like other colleagues in the industry, like who their demographic is and what they cater to. I have a real yeah. niche like audience. So it's well, great. yeah, like you just named off a lot of things that are like niche right? But I mean, it sounds like a great area to live because, you know, being near wine country and also beach, like just sounds like the best of both worlds. So um, yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. Just about um, December of 68. I know. I know. <laughs> Cool, man. So as far as um, like you getting into real estate, I know you've mm -hmm. been in real estate now for, you know, almost 10 years, but like, what yeah. did you do before real estate? How'd you, how'd you get into it? That's a good question. So, um, you know, I had a really interesting, you know, early twenties experience. I'm sure a lot of people did. As, as we all, as, <laughs> as we all, we all have, did. probably. As we all did. So I got licensed in 2007. So it's been 16 years as of September. Okay, and so great a long time. And I, a long, long time. And of course, that was not the greatest time, you know, to kind of get into yeah. the market as a new agent per se. So um, I kind of did odd jobs and stuff, ended up getting in full time in 2012, got my ass really handed to me. And then I got introduced to our mutual friend, Mr. Uh, Tom Ferry. Yep. And so I um, started doing coaching there, really had a lot of growth and expansion and then quickly started developing a team and, you know, kind of going from there. Um, you know, growing up, uh, this is a real interesting market where there's a lot of hospitality here, not super high paying jobs that really catering to the wealthier retirees, vacationers coming in. Yep. And so a lot of people who were successful were mortgage, you know, real estate people that I would notice growing up. And my uncle being one of them, he's a great mortgage um, broker here in, in the area for from the 80s to early 2000s. And so I was like, I want to do that. So when I got licensed in my mind, I was like, I'm going to get into lending, right? And he's like, this yeah. is the worst time for you to get into lending. <laughs> you go back to school or do something else. So I did that. And then when I got in, I realized after talking to mortgage companies, I was like, I don't like that end of the business. Yeah. I was like, in my opinion, I think what we do is sexier, more fun. And so I was like, I want to do that end of the business, residential primarily, you know. Um, of course, we do commercial too, but, you know, that's not the sexier element of it. But yeah. that's what I was like, I'm going to get in. And so I just really, I don't think it was lack of... Um, effort per se. Like I had always put it in good effort, but I think it was just underestimating. And I, and I've echoed this quite a few times because I think new agents, you know, these numbers too, that, you know, 87% of agents in their first two years are no, no longer in the business. Yeah. Don't and make it that, that renewal. 100%, you know, and it's, and there's a, a few reasons for that. And a lot of it's underestimating um, barriers of entry um, under, you know, uh, the low, you're not having realistic expectations on how consistent you need to be, how disciplined you need to be. Um, working for yourself. You think it's fun. You're like, oh, I can just do this on my own leisure. You're like, well, hey, you know what? You worked eight hours half-assed for someone in the past. How can you can you work 12 to 15 for yourself and really yeah. make some changes in your life and your your finances, et cetera? Um, so that was a tough breakthrough for me. And when I signed up with coaching, you know, I did my my talk uh, at Summit in 2017. And that was part of my talk there was just kind of telling about that, discussing that story. And so I went broke and I was like, shit, I have to go back and work for somebody else. <laughs> Signed up for coaching, couldn't afford it, and literally like maxed out my credit card signed up for coaching. I'm like, I have to make this work, right? And then I realized, you know, hey, it's not so much lack of energy and effort on my part, but instead of me going like this, how about I find a few avenues and really go like this? Yeah. And so that that was what we did was um, kind of building some core foundations, figured out what worked. Me, I'm one of those six twisted individuals that I really love confrontation, right? But I also love people. And it sounds horrible, confrontation. And what I mean by that is like, I am that guy who will just walk up and talk to anybody. I'm the guy that will, yeah. 
you know, put myself out there and awkward, you know, out of my comfort zone. And so I've learned to really operate outside of that. But, uh, you know, cold calling, door knocking is something that really clicked with me. And I was able to build a business and, and build and scale it relatively quickly, especially as, you know, an agent or agent with an assistant, right? Yeah. Um, based on on that. And so we, we really did that and, and went strong and we still do um, to that regard. Uh, but that that's kind of my my introduction to this amazing industry. Well, and so, you know, it sounds like, you know, not that you have it all solved today, but like, you know, you just rattled off a bunch of mistakes that new agents make. So if I was a brand new agent and I just got mm -hmm. licensed today and, you know, I just hung my license with a brokerage and I'm like, all right, now I've got to go to work. And like, you know, yeah. how it's like you get ready, you get dressed and you're like, well, wait, where do I go? What do I do? Sure. Whatever. Sure. What advice would you give to a brand new agent on like, hey, here are the things that you need to be doing every single day to like, you know, make, well, make it happen. First thing is going to be morning routine. I think that's the most important thing um, because I think it's 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 like the catalyst for a, a good day, but also positioning yourself to really accomplish what you need during the day. Um, I usually get more, I get all of my personal development stuff done, working out, reading affirmations before 8 a.m. Because come 8 a.m., you know, like I know as being an agent, especially an agent trying to grow your business, um, I cannot get a break until sometimes eight or, eight or nine o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like raging. And so I'm like, I have to get this stuff done, but it also creates that discipline for you to start implementing in other elements of your yeah. business. Like daily prospecting is big. Um, that's, that's really, really important. I'm um, getting your prospecting in, having a cadence of regular follow-up and following those disciplines every single day. You know, even at my level, people are like, you still prospect. I still prospect every day. Um, why? Because it's just, especially in a transitioning market, like it just is, it's never, you're never going to go wrong with prospecting and nurturing. Yeah. You no, know, you really well, can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it, it probably looks a little bit different today than it did, you know, a year ago, mm -hmm. five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, prospecting is so important, you know, for, for everyone in their business, yeah. especially, um, I mean, it's just important for everyone. So, um, speaking of prospecting, right. How we were, we were talking before, like, I want to kind of dig into like some of how you grew your business. Right. Sure. And I think that like the, you know, our team, I think is similar to yours and that like we do a lot of like script practice and role play and things like that to like get everyone like in the right mindset and, and mm -hmm. kind of go in for the day and stuff like that. So, um, mm -hmm. how, like, how did you build your business as far as like what, what lead sources were kind of your, your stuff starting out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and just real quick echoing kind of what you said on morning huddles and role playing stuff, you know, and, and you've seen this trend. I know I have, and this is going out to agents that are newer in the business, even agents who are experienced, the top producers are usually the ones that work out of the office are usually the ones that are on all the morning huddles and role plays and team meetings because they want to keep their tools and their toolbox sharp. Right. Yeah. So I won't get into the weeds on that, but I want to touch base on it because <laughs> it's important. Um, but how we built the business was really expired listings for sell by owners. Um, for me, you know, my family, I'm in, this is an intimate marketplace, very mom and pop feeling still. And we're of course a few hours away from any major city, north or south of us or east, east or Liverpool. So um, I knew everyone here, but people I know growing up are not buying or selling homes. Yeah. And so they either can't afford to, or if they did sell, they'd have to get out of California because they couldn't afford to buy a replacement, at least here anyways. And so I, I was like, what do I do? I was like, my SOI, like, I don't want to say it sucked, but it sucked. I'm like, I have no, I have no, I have all these people I know for years, but I can't, I can't get business from them. Yeah. I was like, well, then I need to find hand raisers, right? I need to find people because a lot of, a lot of new teams, especially, especially agents, if they're not on a team, you know, again, one of the major benefits of being on a team is opportunities and training. Um, but as a new agent, too many agents make the mistake. And I made this mistake. Like when I got in for full time, 2012, I like 50, 60 grand saved. I was like, I'm going to, buy leads. I'm going to do this and that. And like within like 90 days, I exhausted all of my savings. And it's because I underestimated how much consistent check equity it was going to take before I recognized a good ROI, right? Because yeah. what everyone has to keep in mind is even leads on Zillow, everything else, sometimes they're ready now, but if not, on average, they are 18 to 24 months out from transacting. What does that nurture look like? So I'd be calling realtor.com. I'd be calling Zillow. I'm like, your leads suck. They're like, no, like <laughs> just, you're not working them. Yeah. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So long story short, I learned falling out of the business at that time, don't be spending money when I don't have it. And if you yeah. don't have 12 or 24 months for a consistent campaign, direct mail, lead gen, whatever it's going to be, don't. Do sweat, sweat equity. And that's the point I'm driving towards is do sweat equity stuff. Network, go to events, community events, open houses, door knocking, cold calling for sale by owners, um, expired listings, canceled listings. People that are hand raisers are saying, hey, like I've ex literally visibly to the entire public have expressed an interest in buying or selling. 
You're like, yeah. okay, wow, those are the people I'm going to go after. And a lot of people are afraid of them. And what they don't realize is how actually easy they are. Because what are you dealing with? You're dealing with people, right? And you know what their their motivators are. You know what their emotions are like. You know what their fears are. And so going in to that without being super salesy, because I'm great at scripting. I'm great at objection handling. But what I'm also really good at is building rapport with people and building trust. And a lot of that comes from not having BS. Because if you think even in my small market, I'm the only agent going after expires for sale by owners or door knocking, you're wrong. You yeah. know, there's a list of other agents that are doing it, but they may not be doing it as well as you are, right? And it really for hones sure. in on skills. Um, but Fizbo's, for example, I mean, it's really easy. Why are they selling be themselves? Because they don't want to pay a commission, you know? And it really kills me a lot of scripts and you call a Fizbo and you're like, when are you going to work with a powerful agent like me to list your home. It's like, well, hey, dude, all right, you know, you know that I'm saving yeah. on commission. So I don't even tell them that. I'm like, hey, I would love to preview your home. You know, we work with tons of buyers. I'd love to come see it, see if it's a match for someone that we we could be working with. Is that okay? And then I get there and I didn't grill them with questions on the phone. I get there and I'm like, wow, it's a beautiful home. What, where are you guys going? There's a good reason for selling yeah. a home like this. Where are you guys headed? Oh, we're going to Texas. With our, our <laughs> day. Awesome. That's amazing. I love that. Well, very good. So what's your timeline? Okay, very good. How's activity been? Awesome. I even give them a few tidbits and pointers on things they yeah. can do to get more attraction and tension. And then I call back a week later and I say, hey, I wanted to check in. You know what? I haven't come across anybody yet, but I'm looking for you guys. How has activity been? Right. And in and, and a more normalized market, you're going to realize in that first 14 to 21 days, especially around week three, is when they start saying, wow, maybe I can't do this on my own. Yeah. Right. And what do most of them make the mistake of doing? Overpricing. Yep. Right, especially in a transitionary market like we're in. So when I when I call them back, you know, that second or third time in that first 14 to 21 day window, I check and I say, hey, gosh, guys, what, what's been going on over there? Uh, a few showings, a lot of realtors calling us. Right. But not not a lot. I'm like, I get it. Hey, you know what? I understand why you guys are doing what you're doing. You want to save money on commissions. And honestly, if you can do it yourself, hey, more power to you. But I know from experience, honestly, that my team can net you guys more money in a shorter amount of time, even with the difference of commission versus doing it alone. Very consultatively, you don't have to sign up. I'd love to sit down for 20 minutes, kind of show you what it looks like. And honestly, I think you guys have everything to gain and, and really nothing to lose. Does that sound good? It does. Sign me up. Right? Oh, my God. And getting it done, right? But learning little yeah. nuanced things like that of, of kind of getting people's defenses down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and providing value and not BSing and, and building up how amazing you are, but more or less what you can actually do for them. Well, and that's... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's huge because I think that like the, the key things that I, I kind of wrote down or, or kind of outlined as you're going through that, uh, you know, script is like, I think part of it is that like people will make that initial phone call. Right. And then they'll never, if they get the appointment, they'll never follow back up because it's like, oh, if I didn't get the listing on appointment yeah. one, clearly they're not going to list with me. But like, it takes time for all of that to simmer. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, Jay's calling back on day 14, day 21, day 30, then when they are like, you know what, this isn't going to work. We do need more exposure. We mm -hmm. didn't realize that, you know, it's, it's a different section of Zillow and, you know, you're going to put it out to way more people and you actually have a, a full marketing plan and professional photos and all these things. Like, you know, I'm going to go with Jay because you've been consistent and persistent um, mm -hmm. and most give up after that first or second, you know, absolutely, call. Absolutely. And, it's, and it's about value. And every time that call takes place, it's about providing more value to them, more value. Yes. kind of a jab, jab, right hook, you know? Yeah. Gary V approach on things, um, but it works. And it's almost that principle of reciprocity where, you know, they're like, Hey, like I called the first sale owner this morning and followed up with them. It's been two weeks and yeah. very little traction. And they're like, Hey, you know, we actually, and I asked for it and I just straight, just how we handled it. And they're like, you know, actually we would like to meet with you in two weeks. I'm like, perfect. Yeah. Very good. You know, but it does take that cadence of follow up and, and also getting past that fear factor of asking. Right. And, and I think that's important, especially for newer agents that may not have the track record or the confidence of having that conversation. You know, if, if, if you are not confident in yourself and what you're saying, they are also not going to be confident in you. Yeah. And what you're saying. So, you know, I hate to say fake it to make it, but you know, you have to look at, I, I think the, the pros and cons of it, I, I can either get a yes or I can get a no, but either way, I'm not really losing anything. Well, you know? I think that's huge, you know, yeah. and, and I think that, if you don't ask, you're not, they're never going to say to you, well, Hey, it's, it's, I'm going to call you back in, in a, two weeks and tell you that I want to list my home. Like you've at least got to ask for it. You know, the worst exactly. thing they can say is no, but if you mm -hmm. didn't ask, it would have also been a no. So I know, I know to lose this. So you gotta, you gotta be brave. You gotta be brave in these real estate streets and getting <laughs> out there and 
and be asking the right questions, right? Asking for the business, making yeah. it really clear, you know, yeah. just like anything else, you have to be consistent. The more people that are on top of it and proactive, the more that you're, you know, you're going to get chosen as the agent, just like as a listing agent, like I'm a heavy listing agent, you know, that the even not necessarily the best or strongest offers, but more times than not, the agents who are the most aggressive with following up with me are usually ones that tend to get their offer accepted. Yeah. You know, just everything, the more, the more touches, the more, cause that shows urgency, it shows communication, it shows intent. Right. And that is so important, especially as, as an agent. Yeah, no, that, I think that that is very important. I think that like, I mean, how many times have you, you know, had a multiple offer situation that maybe one or two offers went to your junk mail. You didn't know yeah. it. And like the agent never followed up to confirm that you received it to see if there's any feedback to follow up to, to stay on top of it. And like two weeks later, they're like, Hey, did you get my offer? And you're like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I say, that's so funny. About? Like it's been pending for 10 days, bro. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so that's, that's happened to me a few times. And I'm like, uh, you know, if, if we're talking on the phone, I'm like in the nicest mm -hmm. way possible. I'm like, Hey, like just, just like word of advice, like maybe call to confirm sooner and like call, because, you know, sending an email that went to junk and then a text, like, isn't going to get you yeah. anywhere, you know? Right. I feel right. bad for those buyers, if anything. I know. So switching gears a little bit from the FISBO, which, like, you know, I, I would assume that a lot of people re rewinded the tape. <laughs> it's not a tape, but, like, you know, <clears throat> rewinded and, and re-listened to that. Because, um, I mean, th those are all of the right things that you should be saying, you know, when you're making those calls to for sale by owners. Um, so shifting gears a little bit. To, to team, right? Mm -hmm. So you've had yeah. a team now for a while. Yeah. Um, tell me if I were going to start a team today, what advice mm -hmm. would you give me? Because I know I would probably do things differently if I could go back in time and restart my team, right? Yeah. What would you do? What What advice would you give to someone that's like starting a team? Um, I want to start a team. Hey, my advice is be prepared and make the ultimate decision of do I want no personal time? <laughs> <laughs> How much quality of life do I want? No, um, <laughs> it's not It's not for everyone. And I'll put it to you like that. Um, you know, uh, driver personality types, high Ds, I think it's well suited for um, people who do really well with compartmentalizing emotions and being able to make a lot of sacrifice of, of time and energy, but also be willing to handle the risk, you know, and that's important. Um, you know, looking back on things, I had, I was never on a team. I, I probably should have been, you know, yeah. and, and it just depends on what you want. Some agents love to learn for a few years on a team and then maybe branch out on their own. And then others like to grow with the team, you know, yeah. and I think, you know, teams that are on the up and up can provide a lot of growth and opportunity at any level of your business. Because in many instances, I know a lot of teams or agents make more than team leads. And it's because they don't have all the overhead <laughs> expense. It's a truth. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. They, have, they don't have all the overhead expense. And they're like, wow, I can get my my percentage, my cut. I don't have to pay the bills every single month, regardless if yeah. things sell or not. You know, and it's just like so there. I mean, honestly, no, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of stress, you know, and stuff involved um with with that and a lot of risk. And not everybody can deal with it. Just like I have staff that I think would have been amazing agents, but they're like, I would rather take less and be on salary and have the confidence of knowing that I have a paycheck coming in, you know, every week or every other week versus, yeah, um, you know, being on commission. So it, it's really each to their own, but I, I would say really dig deep at your goals and, and make sure that it's coming from a position of contribution. And I think that's the biggest thing. And you see the real good team leads are the ones who really care about their people and their time is really spent on business development, develop personal development with those agents, but also developing opportunities. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, how, how, you know, Katie, you and I know each other and how we know a lot of other agents and teams across the country um, and the globe per se is, is by exposing ourselves and surrounding around the best in the world. And yeah. we do that a lot and it's to learn and collaborate from each other, um, you know, but also learn what can we bring home. You know, what can we yeah. bring home to our agents? What can we bring home to our team agents so they can continue seeing a great value and 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 growing and developing personally and professionally? You know, and go ahead. I'm sorry, I said a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. All of that's great. Um, I think one of the things that you said kind of jokingly at first, right? Yeah. Like humorously at first was basically like, you know, the time and the money and all the things. I mean, the first quarter I started our team was the worst like GCI quarter I ever had because mm -hmm. I was spending so much time in like systems and 
you know, figuring yeah. out and training agent and like doing all mm. of these things that it was like, I wasn't prospecting. I wasn't selling real estate. And I turned around and I'm like, oh shit, I haven't made any money. Right. Yeah, and so I think that people often underestimate that, right. They're like, oh, like I sold a couple houses this year. Like I'm feeling good. Teams are sexy and I want to start a team. Yeah. And it's like, there's a lot more, you know, that goes into it um, like than just one making up a name and, and going. Yeah. So it, 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 it's, and it's big and, and yeah. And as a team lead, if you are, and most team leads will start out that way where they were a great producing agent, maybe would support. And they said, Hey, we want to, we want to grow and provide opportunities and, and continue growing. Um, but yeah, you will, you'll see a year or two of drop off in, in personal production GC, which is scary because yeah. you're all hoping that it pans out and it's made up on the tail end, you know, the long tail of things. Um, and some, something that doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> when you turn around and your agents are making six figures and you're like, well, we're a, you know, blank million dollar yeah. GCI team, but my take home is 20 K a year. Like yeah. this, there's something wrong so, here, you know, you know, you, you've, if you're going to do it, you just got to you know, put the pedal to the metal and make sure that you're, you're, you're doing it the right way. Just like you said, building the systems and, and the support. And then, you know, and I can't stress enough the emphasis on um, personal development. Like I love yeah. selling. I sold a few hundred homes in my career. I, I, I love selling, but I've actually reached a point where I would like to do less. Honestly, I would yeah. like to do less selling. I find it more rewarding to coach and mentor and train agents. Um, you know, even with our current group, it just, even in the last couple months, just watching how much they've grown and improved yeah. and, and what they're doing. And that actually is a lot more rewarding for me right now. And I enjoy it a lot more um, than I do selling. And so, yeah. um, you know, you go through those evolutions yourself, but you, you really, they, people to lead people, people need to know that that authenticity is there, yeah. right? That, that, that contribution is there. Well, and I think that entire goal of like being out of production, right. Or whatever is so different for everyone. And, yeah. you know, um, I've had, I've had team members where or t people ask me, right? Like, oh, well, as a team leader, like what's, what's your, you know, plan or what's your whatever. And I'm like, honestly, for me out of production is like probably selling like 30 homes a year or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so not selling the hundreds or whatever, but you know, mm -hmm. a, a couple per year kind of thing. So I get it. I get it. It's a struggle. It's my daily struggle. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, for sure. I didn't feel very much in production, but um, yeah, it's a hard, hard line to walk for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, I got two questions left. Yes, One, um, if you could recommend a book to read. Yes. For a real estate agent, do you have like one or two that you're like, oh man, like this is always one that we give to new team members or something like that? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one of the reads that I've always liked um, was Grant Cardone's 10X. And that was a book I read early on um, because it, it kind of clicked with me in the sense that I, I realized in, in one point that he makes, I mean, it kind of echoes through the whole book, uh, but in summary is that you people underestimate the barriers of entry, but how much energy and attention, and I would say disproportionate attention it takes in one direction before you start really gaining traction and getting the results that you're looking for. Yeah. And that really clicked with me because I was like, wow, you know, I need to be maximizing every waking moment during my day. So I had the peace of mind of knowing that, Hey, I'm not missing opportunities because I didn't put the effort in, you know, especially early on building a business, there's going to be a lot of sweat equity, as I mentioned, that goes in because yeah. you can't afford check equity. You know, yeah. you can't afford systems and tools and lead gen and this and that, unless you build it off of something else. And in most instances, it's usually sweat equity, you know, yeah. earlier on. So that click, that clicked for me. And then, um, uh, you know, your classic how to win friends and influence people, I think is yep. good for any entrepreneur Super business classic. person starting out. And it's great. Well, just it just it shows communication styles and it shows things in a different perspective, right? In human behavior, when you read the book, you see things that you've done. You think of yourself and you think of how you communicate and you're like, wow, you're like, I didn't quite realize that, you know, true, mm -hmm. like good good token people love talking about themselves. So if you want to network and build rapport people, how about you yeah. don't talk about you and how amazing ask you are? Ask questions. You ask and questions and talk about them and watch them sun like this, you know, shine like the sun and, and yeah. talk to you, you know, so, <laughs> you know, make things about them and remembering people's names. And just a lot of stuff that makes a lot of sense, but you don't quite recognize it until it's, you read the book and you're like, wow, yeah. it makes perfect sense on how, yeah. to, on how to do that. I always love that with like, when you read it, read a book mm -hmm. or you hear something like that and you're like, man, like now, like that's the, the light bulb moment, right. Of like, mm -hmm. oh, like I've always seen that, or I've always, you know, witnessed that. And then it's like the, the light bulb moment. So I like that. Um, all right. Last question yes. stumps a lot of people, but if it were your last meal on earth, mm -hmm. what would you be eating? Oh gosh. Medium or steak, glass of wine. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> I'm a fan. I like that as well. Do you have a specific cut of steak that you're your go to? I like ribeyes first. Oh, yeah. I love you. So do I. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you sharing today um, and mm -hmm. hopping on and, you know, giving yeah, some great advice, great scripts. Uh, if people don't already follow you online, where's the best place for them to find you? Uh, probably Instagram and just search Jay Bond, J-A-Y-B-O-N-D, and I will pop up in the top list of results. So you'll find Perfect. You'll see, you'll see this mug there. <laughs> Smiling face. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Well, again, I appreciate you so much. Looking yeah. forward to hopefully next time I see you, maybe we'll grab a steak and 100%. some wine and all the things, but Thank wish you it. nothing but the best. And I appreciate you. Likewise. Likewise. Right, we'll man. catch you. Bye. Sounds good.